What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a chatty get ready with me, but it, this is gonna be a fun, different style of get ready with me than I've ever done on my channel before. This is getting ready for pride. I already have my hair done and I'm just gonna do some pride inspired makeup. I have literal pride lashes. We are going to answer some questions that you had for me in my Q and A about love life sexuality all the fun things and i'm gonna try to link all the products in the description box because i'm not going to be doing like a tutorial i'm just going to be like chatting with you through this look so let's just get on into it i don't have anything on my face i'm going to start with my brows and i'm going to pull up these questions that you guys uh asked me oh i hope this doesn't do that thing that it always does i'm gonna try to make it sure it stays focused on my face a lot of times when i do these makeup looks sometimes it always focuses on my hand and i know it's really annoying one of the most asked questions on this question box that i did was if i had ever been with a girl before or was this my first experience and um no this is not my first experience and something that i truly regret is not being more forthcoming about that in my previous relationships because as somebody who is very femme presenting i feel like when you are like i considered myself back then like pansexual or bisexual whatever and i feel like a lot of people don't take you seriously when you're very femme presenting like they'll just be like oh it's a phase or in my case um i was around a a lot of people who are very very religious and judgmental and not accepting of that whatsoever and it would have it ultimately did end up changing their view of me the way that they saw me um and you know that was a really difficult life lesson for me <laughs> i wish that i would have just been more like confident in myself back then the way that i am now because i think <laughs> certain uh, things in my life would not have happened had i talked more about that no this is not my first rodeo i have not done a winged liner in so long and it shows <laughs> so like a year ago i think it was right around this time actually i had made a video talking about a little bit of my truth and what was like really bothering me back then because a lot of people wanted to say that my previous relationship ended because i was hiding the fact that i was uh attracted to women and that is actually not true and so if you didn't see that video go watch that video because i talked a lot about like my younger days and kind of like knowing that i was attracted to both genders you know like i was just saying i definitely wish that i would have been more open with myself and honest with myself because i do feel like there was a lot of compulsive heterosexuality going on a lot of internalized homophobia especially with the group of people that i was around um but i do think that I have kind of always known since I was like, I don't know, in middle school probably, and I talked about this in that video too. My first crush on a on a teacher was actually a female teacher. And you know, like back then you don't really quite understand that. <laughs> like you just know that you feel this certain way, but you don't really understand at like 10 years old why that is. So I think this is something that I've genuinely always known, but it was not something that I felt comfortable talking about with certain people in my life. Good question. Would I ever consider marrying again as an LGBTQ person? Um, and I will say that I genuinely struggle now thinking about the concept of marriage. Um, I think I really just was honestly getting married for the wrong reasons and that's really tough to admit because obviously it was public so <laughs> more embarrassing for me. But I feel like if I were to ever take that step again that I would probably just do like an elopement that wasn't like legally a wedding you know like i just can't quite see myself going through a legal wedding again i don't know my thought on that might change as i get older but as of like this current moment i just like genuinely am struggling with the concept of like actual marriage again especially as somebody who doesn't want kids 
was it different to have a first date with a girl versus a guy? Yes, um, obviously. Everything in a female-female relationship is very, very different. And I will say something that I've always genuinely loved about female relationships is that you kind of have this, like, feeling of being with your absolute best friend. Like, it just gives, like, sleepover, fun, parties. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just more... I don't know this is because I feel safer with women I'm not entirely sure but I have never had a heterosexual relationship that actually felt like that person was my genuine best friend that's something that I have always struggled with with straight relationships is it's just I never really felt fully safe and that is you know at no fault of them I'm not saying that anyone did anything wrong it's just that I don't ever feel that super secure comforting you know what I mean it's just I, I really have a hard time with men with that and I always have and I think something that I learned like looking back in my early 20s was that a lot of my relationships and uh patterns with men a lot of them were very much so validating, like I was seeking their approval and not necessarily because I actually wanted to be with them. And that was kind of something that took a while for me to like fully grasp because of, you know, compulsive heterosexuality. <laughs> but I think it really opened my eyes now because I look back on that and I'm like, wow, I really actually was like, just wanting them to validate me, whether that was like physically, emotionally, whatever, because of my dad issues and all that stuff, it wasn't actually that I was really, really attracted to them. And that's why I think I struggled a lot in my early 20s with some of those relationships because I was trying to like fill this void that wasn't really there, you know? Okay, next question, has my family been supportive? So actually, my mother, you know, I don't have any relationship with my dad, unfortunately, but my mom, she actually knew um, back when I was like 16 years old. And this is because I had, you know, like I was saying, I was on Tumblr and I had posted a super, like, I don't even remember if it was like a music video or something where I was, I ended up kissing this girl on New Year's Eve and it was like recorded and then we uploaded it and I walked into my house and my mother had that video up on her computer screen like right when I walked into the house. So she kind of like found out before I was even able to genuinely come out to her, which is, you know, I feel like that happens a lot at that age when you're younger and you're like not really thinking about when you do stupid things. So yeah, my mom at the time, bless her heart, you know, I think like I was saying about being femme presenting a lot of people of that generation were definitely thinking that it was a phase. She. I think struggled with it in the beginning, but after a while she became very accepting of it. And then the more that I kind of grew to be like an adult and we discussed it, I think was when she really started to understand like, okay, this is actually someone's feelings and how they feel about another human being. It's not just like, oh, I was kissing a girl. You know what I mean? So yes, she is super supportive now. She loves Miranda. You know, thankfully, I think for any parent, really, they just want to see their kid happy. And she actually, the other day, told me that she um, struggled in my previous relationship to say something to me about what she was seeing from the outside. And she wishes that she did. So I think that that's really interesting just to kind of hear from her perspective and to see that she's very supportive of my relationship right now which is so lovely like I'm really really thankful for that and my brother um he just he's just my brother you know he doesn't really he doesn't really care that much if I'm being honest how do you deal with uncomfortable situations where a stranger incorrectly incorrectly assumes your relationship with your partner if that happens quite a bit I would say I just say oh no she's my partner because I think sometimes if you say girlfriend and you're both feminine like in my situation sometimes they just think like friends but to be honest with you I, I genuinely like don't I don't really sweat that too much it happens and you just kind of like move on from it this question since you started being evaluative did that help realize your sexuality so I posted this um 
post on Instagram where I was talking about what my therapist had told me about procedural thinking versus evaluative thinking. And procedural thinking is what a lot of us do is something that I really struggled with when I got out of a toxic relationship and I got into my next relationship shortly thereafter. And had I really taken some time to be with myself and ask myself like what exactly I wanted um, and not just go into something because it was like normal and what I should do because it was healthy and like these types of things, right? Like, oh, you should, the next step is you should get engaged. You should get married. You should do this. You should be happy. You should feel this way. And I really struggle with that. And that's a lot of procedural thinking. That's a lot of sometimes based in a moral compass, sometimes just like, you know, oh, this is what I should do, so I guess I'll just do that. <laughs> and I don't necessarily think that thinking more evaluative, evaluate, evaluative, whatever, thinking like that really uh, helped my sexuality. It was more so knowing in that moment that what I was in was really not true to what I believed. And I, I wrote that post about that book I read called Untamed, and in that book, uh, Glenn Doyle was discussing integrity and how it should ultimately be like your integrity is who you are to the world, like who the world sees you as versus who you are in your home. And I remember when I read that, it was like a year and a half ago, I think I read that and I was like, oh my God, this is this is just not it. Like, because I, w I was saying these things to my best friend, to my closest friend, and then to the world, I was like this happy, go lucky, like perfect world, perfect life person. And in reality, that was actually not the truth. And so I had to really take a hard look at myself and ask in that evaluative way, is this genuinely what's serving me? Do I really believe these things? And honestly, the answer was no. Like some of the things that I was dealing with in that part of my life were so far from what I believed in and I struggled with it so hard. Like from a religious standpoint, from a political standpoint, there were just, especially during COVID, oh my gosh, there were so many things that were happening at that time that I really, really did not agree with and did not believe in. But because of that procedural thinking, this is what I should do, this is what I should feel, I really battled a lot with that. And so even though I knew deep down what the truth was and how I felt about things, it was more that I wasn't being honest with myself and with those around me. And ever since I started doing that, I feel like I am in a much better place and I am a much more authentic and true version of myself. How do you find a relationship with women different compared to with men? Well, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> For me personally, I feel like more comfort, more closeness, more intimacy in different ways. I think something I really struggled with uh, in my previous relationships, in heterosexual relationships, a lot of that was um, struggling to be fully myself, struggling to have conversations, struggling to relate on certain things. And I will say it is super nice to be in a relationship where talking is really easy, like having conversations and being able to have emotionally mature conversations. We talk a lot about our traumas, our childhood traumas. We talk a lot about anxieties and, and things like that. And we're both in therapy. I think it's a bit more emotionally mature in my personal experience. I'm not saying this for every person, but just in my experience, I have felt a lot more emotional closeness than I have with men. I think it's also just a different, like, I mean, it's totally different because you are a female, like at least for me, I'm a girl. So I understand the way that girls think. Girls understand the way that we think. It's very, I don't know, it just feels like friends. It feels like you are dating a friend in a good way. And, you know, I also will say that I did not have the best um, sexual experience, sexual experiences heterosexually if I'm being honest. And so for me, I also kind of feel that same way, like women kind of just know, you know what I mean? So that's also a nice component to it that you're kind of just getting that like, you know, without really like having to ask. And this kind of relates to a lot of things that, I'm, that I feel in my uh, women relationships and I have in the past is that a lot of times I find that with women, and I know like a lot of my other gay friends have said this as well, you're not oftentimes having to tell your partner what it is that you need, which is a huge, huge, huge thing for me and what I dealt with for a really long time. I'm not having to ask for uh, certain things to be met, whether that's like, you know, house chores or whatever. Like a lot of times women are just this way. Again, not all women, but we're just a way in which we can 
see the things that need to be done and we just kind of do them. And that's something that I just have always noticed with women, even just my friends, right? Like I remember when last year when my friend Jen came to Pride with me, I mean, she was like doing my dishes. Helga was vacuuming my floors when she was visiting. Like they'll make the bed when they, they stay over, you know, like th that seems so silly, but I just find that that's such a woman specific thing for the most part, not all women, but just in my experience. And I'm finding that I don't really have to be like, okay, I'm gonna make you this chore list of things to do. It's more so like women will come in, come home from work and they will see that the dishes need to be done and they'll just do them. Or they will see that the floor needs to be vacuumed and she will just do it or the laundry or so on and so forth. And so kind of like taking away that mental load of feeling like I have to tell my partner how to be a partner both like in the house and in uh, like a relationship standpoint it's it's definitely it's a big change <laughs> okay that was a long-winded answer to that question but there's a lot of differences have I ever suppressed those feelings yes absolutely a hundred percent I think even as a younger child I was like mm, none of my other friends feel this way so I think that I'm not normal and uh that was something I had to deal with in therapy later on. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, suppressing it being in a very straight world and especially as very feminine woman, it's totally normal for people to not take you seriously when you express those types of things. So I definitely would say that I pushed those feelings down for sure and was not like fully accepting of them even within myself for a while until I was like, an adult. When did you know that you wanted to be with Miranda? Okay, so actually there was a very specific moment. This this story like has a very specific moment. So obviously, you know, Tuxie passed away last year. And um, when I was in the emergency vet, I was on the phone with both Miranda and Aaron, my best friend. And before I had even known what was actually happening, Miranda was already looking at flights because obviously she didn't live here. She lived in Florida. She was already booking the flight for the following. It was that night. It ended up getting canceled because the pilot had too many hours, but she was literally buying an $800 flight to come here and be with me when that was happening. No questions asked. Like I didn't ask her to do that. Um, she just showed up and she ended up coming in the next day. And that was when uh, we had to put Tuxi down. And I, like, I get chills even just telling this story because I just remember how physically painful it was. I remember sitting on that floor when that happened and, you know, the vet was there and everything. And I, like, I was absolutely the, oh, I hate talking about this because I literally always cry every single time. I was literally feeling like I had to go to the hospital. Like, I was so absolutely inconsolable. And I thought I was genuinely going to have a panic attack. Like, I was not okay and when it happened and he had been put to sleep I remember being like I can't breathe I can't breathe and I was like looking at her and she was looking at me and she was like just breathe with me like you can you can do this you can do this just breathe with me and I remember like looking at her in that moment and just feeling like so out of control and everything else but she was so like she was hysterically crying as well obviously but like she was so just comforting and trying to really really make me feel like it was going to be okay and that comfort in that moment was when I knew that I wanted to actually like have a serious uh relationship with her I felt so so cared for in that whole week I mean like I was non-functioning I couldn't do shit and she was helping me so much just like whether it was with Bailey around the house or whatever and I felt just really supported and that's kind of how she's always been since then it's just something that when I feel like I need some support and I need someone to kind of just ground me that's the kind of person that she is for me so you know that was a really really traumatic thing with Tuxie and I was it was definitely a pivotal a pivotal point of our relationship did you try to ignore being gay and marry a man because you were supposed to um no I actually got married because I was in love with that person I know crazy crazy to believe and I thought that in that time of my life that getting married would solve the issues. Obviously, that's not the case. And that didn't have anything to do with my sexuality. And that's something that, you know, I talked about plenty when it first happened. And I, I understand that a lot of people like want something to blame, right? Obviously when something goes wrong or it doesn't work out, they're obviously looking for the answers, the reasons. And I totally understand that. No, I genuinely loved that person and I thought that getting married would 
bring that emotional closeness that I was, you know, just talking about. And it wasn't a direct correlation with my sexuality at that point in my life. Um, that's something that I have always known since I was literally a young child. So it wasn't like that was something I just discovered. I've always known that. It was more or less being... Uh, very very honest with myself and with those around me you know any advice on telling my husband um <laughs> i don't know that i am the best person to ask this advice because i will be honest i did not realize that this conversation was as pivotal and as uh, detrimental to my relationship as it was. Maybe that's naive of me to even admit but i actually made a comment and it was just such like a casual comment i didn't it wasn't even like a formal like i need to tell you something which is crazy but like that's the truth because i didn't think that it had anything to do with our relationship like i don't know i just i felt like if you love someone and you chose to marry them you know like what what does it matter i don't know that's just my my thought on it but i guess that was the wrong way to go about it i would advise anyone in that situation to definitely uh have a conversation especially like if you feel like your significant other is like not going to be supportive of that i guess really that that would have changed my my viewpoint of that like had i known that it would have been such a big detriment i probably you know should have had it sooner than later but it just wasn't that wasn't the way that things played out and that's totally okay uh but i will say that if you think that your relationship is one in which it would not be supportive then i would ask yourself if that's the kind of relationship you want to be in it's like from my point of view how someone chooses to identify themselves is completely irrelevant to me if miranda woke up tomorrow and decided that she felt like she was trans or she felt like she was actually bisexual or whatever the case may be i would be like okay like how can i support you and so i guess it was silly of me to think that other people would feel the same way especially being in a committed relationship you know so i would say truthfully ripping the band-aid off is probably the best way to go about it sometimes i think people don't understand that when it comes to things like this i i at least from my point of view i never intended to hurt anyone's feelings or ego or anything with my, within my own sexuality I, I just genuinely did not i think people who have ever struggled with their sexuality can agree with me when i say that it's something that you are struggling with internally and so this is never a direct like hit on somebody else you know what i mean and it, it's really hard when you're in a relationship like that to get that across especially if the other person does not struggle with their sexuality can we just give a moment for this look right now because i'm just winging this as i go along and i think this is honestly one of the best looks that i have ever done in my entire life like can we just talk about this rainbow and the rainbow lashes these are i lore love is love they are literally a rainbow tip can you see that <laughs> like this is so cute i really seriously had no hopes for this minus the little black mascara that i got on my eyelid that's not coming off i think this is really giving this is really giving gay and like i'm just really here for this yeah, so let me see if there's any more juicy questions here this is so sweet how how can you be a good ally really trying to be better honestly listening and amplifying anyone in the lgbtq plus community really that is just i think what the majority want to want to feel is heard and accepted and loved the biggest gift that you can give someone in my opinion is the opportunity for them to be comfortable within themselves and be able to share that with you and you know i think that's something that in my relationship that's what has allowed me to be so happy and so open and honest is because i'm with somebody who genuinely allows me to be me who knows every single part of my past who is not judgmental about my past or anything else like that and so if you're trying to be a good ally or support system for someone just letting them be them and listening to them and hearing their their thoughts and their experiences is is so so valuable anyways this is the final pride look i hope that you guys enjoyed this little chatty answering your questions video with me so i am off to go take some pictures at pride and enjoy the day so let me know if you enjoy this video thank you as always so much for supporting me and following me along on my journey both in the beauty and fitness space but also just as myself i really appreciate you guys so hit that thumbs up click subscribe and i will see you in next week's video